Welcome to part 3 of this video series of my Demon Mech. Now for those of you joining for the first time, this is being built for the original Mecha competition. And I go through what that is in previous parts of the video, so it might be worth catching up um, to the point we're at now. So um, as you can see, we're sort of really honing in on the finish line. Um, so in this part of the video, I'm going to be going through adding detail. In the previous video, we sort of got the basic structure of the mech finished. So I like to think of this as the skeleton of the robots, i.e. that it could kind of move, it's got pistons, it's got some mechanical detailing that would allow it to sort of move around. So it's sort of functional. Uh, but in this video, what I need to start doing is adding an outer skin, some sort of armor plates to protect that detail. What I also want to do is add a load of mechanical mechanical detail to this. At the minute I think the forms are quite basic, you know we've got some mechanical detailing in there, but there's a question here about how big is this thing. In my head I'm thinking it's about the size of a house, but the thing is there's nothing in the piece yet that sort of indicates that. So what I need to do is start adding some small mechanical detailing uh, to give it some scale to sort of indicate that this is a large machine. So these are two pieces I had finished in the previous part and these were intended to go over the legs. I've made some round sections and some connectors on the legs so I can just push fit these in place. They're made out of some PVC pipe and some acrylic which I've just glued together and sanded. So I need to go ahead and do something similar for the rest of the body. So what I've got are these clear acrylic spheres which I use quite frequently in my builds. I've used one for the centre body piece here and the idea that I have for this is that the centre piece is sort of like maybe a fusion reactor which is burning really really hot. So um, I do need to add a load of detail on there but given that that's the centre of the robot I sort of need some armour panelling to protect that. So what I've got is another larger um, sphere here and I'm going to cut this down to size so it can fit over the mechanical detail that I've got in place. I really like these things because they're very easy to cut and shape. They can be a little bit fragile and brittle though, so you need to be a little bit careful with them. But you can just use them as a sort of a basic shape and build upon them, and then add some further pieces to them to give them a bit more strength. So I'm just sanding this down uh, with a Dremel to try and get this to fit. So as you can see that sort of more or less fits on top of the body here. Now obviously I've got to make space for these pressure canisters to fit on top. Um, so a lot of the robot at the minute is sort of push fit and held together with blue tack. So that means I can pull it apart quite easily. So it's handy because that's going to allow me to mark where the hole should go. Now because these spheres are quite brittle and um, easy to damage, um, I found that drilling holes in with a regular drill bit doesn't really work that well. So what I'm using is this Dremel bit to just put a hole in it um, initially. And then I'm using this stepped drill bit on the drill here to actually widen the hole. These ones don't have the sort of corkscrew um, shape that regular drill bits do, so they're much better for sort of cutting holes in flat planes or thin materials. Now I mentioned before that I'm using the Balrog from Lord of the Rings as a sort of a rough guide as to how this should look. So I've just added a piece of acrylic on top of the sphere here. Um, the Balrog sort of has all these flames shooting up from its back. Now I, I don't want to have that on this robot but I sort of like the idea of that. It looks a little bit like a fin perhaps. So I'm thinking maybe a similar shape could be included on my robots as well. Now one of the debates that you sort of end up in with this sort of thing is how much of the detail that I've already added to the robot should I cover with the armour panels that I'm putting in place. Now I've got these pistons in the centre waist of the robot and as you can see they can allow the robot to move in sort of any orientation. Um, so they're sort of a weak spot so you might logically want to protect these and cover them. And what I've got are these shapes that I've made for the uh, pistons on the back of the leg. These uh, pistons here are the same width so I could put these in place like this. But to be honest with you, I'm not quite sure whether I want to cover these or not. So for the minute, that's a sort of a possibility. So I've cut the fin down slightly and I'm just sort of adding some additional detail here. As you can see, I have this piece of pipe on the back, which I've cut to size. And that just fits exactly over this sort of mechanical detailing at the back. And I'm thinking about what sort of mechanical detailing I could add to this piece. Now I have got this um, wire, so I'm thinking perhaps some aerials might be something I could add on. We also recently had a washing machine delivered, and when they come, they come with restraining bolts which holds the drum in place. You have to take those out before you can actually use it. So I've got four of these sort of shapes which look quite interesting. So I'm even thinking maybe this could be some sort of large gun on the top. Perhaps that might be a bit overkill, but I do quite like the look of this piece. So I'm thinking that might come in handy in some way. So there's some possibilities there, so I'm going to sort of leave that to um, sit for a while. Uh, I'll carry on with some other pieces and we'll see where we end up. 
Now I mentioned in my previous video that I made a sort of uh, injection mold for the hands for the robots and um, that proved really useful for doing the hands so I wanted to do something similar for some pressure canisters. I did make a mold with four different sizes but because um, of the scaling issue I was talking about earlier I really wanted to be able to produce some smaller pressure canisters so I've made an additional mold here of the smallest of those four um, and that works in exactly the same way as the previous injection mold. I just have a plunger that I can push into the mold and that injects the resin through the silicon mold. So there we go, so I think that's going to be quite useful for adding some additional mechanical detailing at scale to the robot. So I'm also starting to think about the legs of the robot. Obviously that's a bit of a weak spot for any sort of walking machine, so you might logically want some form of protection on there. Now again, I don't want to necessarily cover all of this mechanical detail that I've added, because I do like the look of it. Uh, nevertheless, the shins are sort of basically featureless, so they're basically at the minute just a piece of 50mm copper pipe. So I want to add some additional pieces to them. Uh, now what I've got is this, which I've had in the bits box for ages. It's actually a clip that you would add um, garden hose material to. I've sanded off the bracket here so I'm just left with this interesting shape but I think that fits really really well over the ankle um, so what I've done is to expand this out with some PVC pipe um, into this shape and this fits quite nicely on the front of the uh, shin uh, as you can see the piece on the side sort of covers the pressure canisters so I think this is a good balance between having some protection for the robot which you would logically want but also allowing us to see some of the mechanical detail that's in place. I've also got some cast of this sort of blocky piece which I made in the previous video. Um, I like the idea of using the same sort of shapes throughout the whole robot, so using cast of the same thing does add a degree of continuity to the design. So I'm thinking that might look quite nice on the top of the piece there. I always find it quite useful to sort of take stock after a while and sort of see where we are. So now we've got some shin guards in place and we've got an armour section on the top of the robot. As you can see I actually cut up that piece from the washing machine in the end and just used pieces from it to sort of add some mechanical detailing to the top of the robot. One of those pieces has actually got a sort of circle cut into it. So I think what I'm going to do is add a gun turret on top of the robot. So what I'm doing here is using some uh, resin pieces and uh, some acrylic shapes to make the uh, gun turret. And this is really just a case of slowly building this up and sort of adding bits until I find something that sort of looks like a cohesive piece. For a while I wasn't quite sure what to do with these brass tubes, I mean they look pretty good for barrels but I kind of felt they needed some additional detailing on there. Uh, so what I've found is these uh, wall plugs um, which actually look really really good. So what I've done is to drill the interior out uh, to the correct diameter and they just slot over the brass tube and I think they look pretty cool. So that's uh, quite a nice way of uh, adding some mechanical detailing there in a fairly easy way. So that's looking pretty good on top of the robot I think. So I'm sure many of you saw that I posted a short video um, a while back asking whether the robot should have a tail uh, and the overwhelming consensus was that it should so I'm sure you saw the follow-up video as well uh, showing what the tail ended up looking like. Um, so thanks for everyone's suggestions there and um, they were many and varied and um, they're really really useful so um, I, th I definitely think the tail actually adds something to the piece and um, sort of adds a bit of a counterbalance perhaps to the head um, facing forwards. So thanks very much for everyone's feedback on that. But I need to expand this now, so what I'm going to start doing is cutting up some pieces to add some armour plating to the tail to make it look a bit more solid. And what I'm using for most of the armour panels on this robot is just varying sizes of PVC pipe. Uh, we had some plumbing done recently, so we had a load of PVC piping left over, so I've got tons of this, so it's really, really useful for adding sort of curved shapes to pieces. So as you can see, I'm adding some acrylic shapes to this to further build out the tail. Right, so there we go. So um, this is one of those occasions where it sort of seemed totally logical to add these spines to the tail uh, when I was doing it. 
Um, however, now seeing it in place, I'm actually thinking this is probably the wrong way to go. I'm actually thinking it looks a little bit like Mecha Godzilla or something like that, which um, you know, which is a totally cool kind of creature, but not necessarily something that I want to include in this piece. So I actually decided to take these spines off in the end. Okay, there we go. So there's the uh, robot now without any spines, and I think that looks a lot better to my eyes. It looks a little bit less bulky. Um, I do still need a bit of mechanical detailing on these um, tail sections, but I think that's looking pretty good for the time being. Right, so now it's time for the uh, really, really small details. So I'm going to dismantle the robot here and start adding those in. Okay, so it's important to have some uh, small pieces that you can use. Uh, now typically you might kit bash, so that's the buy some plastic model kits, pull them apart and use the pieces from those kits to add detail to your model. Um, I said before I'm trying to avoid that sort of thing as much as possible and I'm trying to sort of scratch build as much as possible, so I'm just going to try and create my own shapes here. Um, so what I've got is a bunch of ball bearings that I'm making moulds of, and also I've got these sort of L-shaped pieces here. What they are is actually some sprue from Games Workshop, but I've just added a little round section to the end there. So once these are dry, I'll be able to cast up multiple resin copies of these uh, ball bearings and those sections. Now something that I've used extensively in uh, this robot and others is this conduit. Um, so I've got a 6 and 4.5mm and there, and that's quite useful. I've also got this aluminium wire in various sizes, so that's really useful for adding cabling detail as well. What I have discovered is this stuff, which is a line you would use for curtains. And if you cut away the plastic sleeve, there's quite a small scale spring in there, which is actually really, really useful for cabling. Um, one thing that I have found very difficult um, with cables is if you've got a cable on a model, you kind of want some pieces to hold it in place, um, otherwise the cable would move all over the place. Now doing that at scale can sometimes be quite tricky, so I've had to come up with some creative ways of doing this. Now because this um, cable has got this plastic sleeve on it, what you can do is actually cut small sections of it out and then slide them up the cable. And if you get it sort of thin enough, they look like cable holders. So you can then just glue those onto the surface of the robot or whatever model you're using on. And that looks quite nice as some ribbed cable. So I'm going to try using this on this model. For smaller scale cables, you can just use electrical cabling, um, which I've got here. Uh, but one thing again is finding those small scale cable holders can be a bit tricky. So what I've discovered are these, which are very tiny beads used for jewellery making. And these are about one mil across, but the hole in the centre is precisely the right size for this uh, electrical cabling. So what I can do is actually thread these um, onto the electrical cable, and they'll do really, really well as cable holders. So um, they seem to work quite well. And for even smaller scale cable, I've got these, which are sort of square beads with a very tiny hole in the center. They feed over this silver wire quite nicely. So I've sort of got a variety of scales here, which I can use to incorporate into the model. So what I've got is the um, torso and waist section here. And what I want to do is just layer on lots and lots of mechanical detailing here to really sort of sell the scale of this robot and add a bunch of sort of mechanical um, detail in so that it looks like a sort of a functioning piece. I mentioned before I've got loads of these cast resin shapes so I'm thinking I can add one on the front here in a sort of a chest section. So in order to make that fit I'm going to have to sand that down slightly so it fits on the acrylic shape that it's resting against. So I'm just cutting a channel in there with a the Dremel. I've also got a bunch of other resin shapes which I can use so I'm just gluing these on trying to build up an arrangement of shapes that looks natural. Now it's always worth seeing um, some reference images and obviously there aren't any demon robots out there really that you can use as reference. What I did find was this cross section of a Russian uh, submarine's engine room and as you can see there is tons and tons of cabling and mechanical equipment all crammed into a very tiny space. I mean obviously that makes sense for a submarine um, but I think it's interesting to see how much of this is actually crammed into one space so that sort of gave me a guide as to how I should do with this you know just keep whacking and detailing basically um, until it sort of starts reading and a sort of a, a believable functioning item. Because I've got these uh, pistons that run over the front of this, I just need to occasionally add them back in to make sure that the detail I'm adding isn't going to get in the way of these pieces, but it seems okay so far. 
So as you can see, I've added some of this ribbed cable onto the left-hand side. So I'm going to carry on now and do the same on the right. So I'm drilling some holes into the piece to allow the cabling to fit. I'm just cutting down the sleeving to create some cable holders. So that can go on there and I'm just gluing that in place. I've also got some more cabling here and now this is from some old headphones I think. So I'm just putting that in place. In order to put this curved section of cabling in, what I've got is some brass tube here, uh, which the internal diameter is just right for the uh, ribbed cabling. So I'm putting some holders in place and then I can bend the cabling around this round piece. And the brass rods will hold it in place. All right, so that's looking pretty nice I think, uh, but still plenty to go, so I'm just going to keep adding detail to this. So I thought it would make sense to have another piston uh, for the arm, so I've added that in place there. And that's just made out of some styrene tube and some aluminium bar. So I've also got some casts of these pressure vessels that I've made from my injection mould, so I'm going to glue those in place as well. I'm trying to have everything connect to this centre and round section. As I mentioned, I'm thinking that this might be the sort of uh, fusion reactor that powers the whole thing, so it makes sense that a lot of cabling and pressure vessels and other mechanical details should all sort of connect to it. Something else that I've used on previous builds are these things, and these are like a rivets, which would be used in clothing, um, so you can put like a thread through. I've got a few different scales here, the really tiny ones come from a model ship company, uh, but these are really useful for sort of adding junctions into the piece. You can just put them in place and then thread a cable through them, and that's quite a nice way of adding tubing or cabling to the robot. So one thing that I've really been dreading yeah, is this, so because I've sort of thrown lots of disparate um, objects together to create this robot, and they don't all fit together exactly, so there are some gaps, uh, like the one you can see here. So what I need to do is start filling in these gaps to make this one cohesive piece. Um, so I'm going to do that using some epoxy, and um, I've got this stuff which is uh, Aves epoxy, um, which is uh, very similar to Milliput. Um, but same sort of thing. Uh, green stuff is also something that's commonly used. Uh, and I'm just going to push this into the gaps here between all of the pieces. Now, there's quite a lot of gaps across the robot. Um, you know, I wasn't too careful when I was putting this together. So there's a fair bit of filling to do. But I'm going to go through the whole robot and fill in all of these gaps. And um, the cool thing with this stuff is you can sort of push it in with a sculpting tool and then wipe it down with a wet cloth afterwards to get a nice smooth finish. So, a bit laborious, but a necessary process. I've decided to use some of these cast uh, shapes that I've made earlier from these ball bearings and what I want to do is sort of add some mechanical detail into these to make them look a bit like a junction uh, that I can feed a cable into. Now these are really really tiny so it's a little bit tricky but I'm going to try and do this on the lathe. So I'm going to try and get this into the chuck and sort of hold it in uh, place. And what I can then do is come in and sort of just cut an edge into this uh, so it looks like a sort of a machined item. It took a few goes to get this right, but it sort of got there in the end. Um, I could have made a mould of these and cast up multiples, but I decided it would be easier just to sort of make a few by hand. Uh, so it's a relatively simple shape, it's just tricky because they're quite small. So what I'm going to do is uh, drill a hole in the centre and then cut in some mechanical detailing. Right, so there we go, fairly simple, uh, but you get the idea. And that fits quite nicely on the end of the cable like that. Now those of you who get quite exercised about health and safety, uh, let's just say you might want to look away at this point. So basically these things, because they're round, are really tricky to hold. Um, I did try and hold these in some pliers and some various other ways, but I just couldn't find a good way of gripping that curved surface. So sometimes just holding it with your fingers is the way to go. Now. Um, this isn't going to tear my fingers off um, if I do catch them with a Dremel. So it's not super dangerous, but obviously it can go a little bit wrong sometimes, as you can see here. So uh, I'm not recommending you try this at home, uh, but you know sometimes you just got to suffer for your art, so what can I say? Okay, so these things have now got a curve on one side, which will allow me to add them to the sort of waist section of the robot. And the cable fits in quite nicely. So this is how they're going to sit. So what I need to do is come up with a way of sort of um, terminating the other end of the cable. And I think what I'm going to do is just drill into the resin shape there so the cable can disappear into the robot. And I'm just going to add a piece of brass tube as well to add a sort of junction look to the piece. 
Oh, so there we go, so I think that looks quite nice like that. So I mentioned my use of beads previously for adding some cable connectors, scale model cabling. So I've actually found some even better fits. So these beads are round um, and they're much smaller and I think they look much, much better as sort of a scale model uh, cable clips. So I think they look quite good. So as you can see here, I'm adding some green cabling to the leg of the robot. And as you can see, I've built the leg up with various other resin shapes as well. Something that I've been back and forth on quite a lot is uh, shoulder pads for the robot. Um, I couldn't really come up with a shape that really worked to be honest, so it took me quite a long time to sort of figure out what to do. But in the end I sort of came back to something that I'd done before. So um, this is a mould of a yoghurt pot which I'd used in the previous mech build. Um, and I thought the shoulder pads for that robot worked pretty well. So in the end I sort of thought well maybe I'll just work here as well. So what I'm doing is using some rotocasting resin um, to create a hollow cast of that yoghurt pot. With this sort of thing what I find is quite useful is these things which is just leftover silicon uh, from the mould. Um, there's always some left over in the mixing cup. Um, so I tend to save them because they can be quite useful for putting on the end of open moulds like this. Um, so that's going to then allow me to rotate the mould around uh, as I rotocast so the resin won't be able to escape. What I also found is if you press this in slightly you get a bit of a suction effect so it stays on by itself. So that's actually quite useful. So it's just a question of rotating this around until the resin cures and obviously I can take the uh, end cap off occasionally just to see how that's going. Once it starts drying I can just use a spatula to make sure the ends of the cast aren't too thin. Right, so there we go, so that needs a bit of trimming up but I think that will look uh, pretty good on the shoulder. I also need to add some additional uh, mechanical detailing to the arm uh, and again I could you know make a shape make molds etc but I'm trying to work quickly here so what I've done is to take a resin um, cast of a 50mm pipe and I'm just um, hand tooling some detail into it on the lathe I can then cut that in half to give myself two pieces and then just glue those onto each side of the arm I need to do a bit of a curve there so it can sort of fit onto the junction on the elbow so I'm just going to sand that down slightly on the Dremel So I think that's going to look quite nice with some mechanical detail. Now as I mentioned earlier I did make an injection mould of my um, small uh, pressure canister but I started thinking actually I need something even smaller to really sell the detail so I've made this uh, which is as you can see is a really really tiny pressure canister. Now again I did intend to make several of these on the lathe but actually I think I was lucky to make one every time I tried to make another one the thin aluminium bar that I was using just sort of bent so um, I've decided to make a mould of this um, so because it's so small I really do need it to be an injection mould so I'm going to make uh, another mould exactly the same as the previous one, just obviously much much smaller. So there we go, there's a resin cast of my pressure vessel and that was just made with a very small injection mould. Now the cool thing with this type of resin is if you heat it, it actually gets quite floppy and then you can then bend it. So I can actually use the stem from the uh, pore channel there uh, as a piece of conduit. I think that looks pretty nice amongst all of the other mechanical detailing there. I've just added some strips of aluminium tape onto the um, pressure vessel there to sort of indicate something holding it in place. And that's quite thin so it sort of further indicates the scale. I actually decided to use the aluminium tape for the other pieces of the robot. Because it's quite thin, I thought it would be quite useful as sort of um, further panelling detail. Hopefully once I've given this a layer of paint, this will show up. It's sort of very fine mechanical detailing. And this stuff's quite useful because it's got a sticky back to it. Um, and it can sort of follow curves quite nicely. And also it can just be cut with some scissors. So that's quite a quick and easy way to add some mechanical detail on some surfaces.
Right, so there we go. Now, um, this is obviously a big mass of components and it's sort of getting a bit difficult to see how this is really going to look because obviously there's quite a lot of individual pieces, quite a lot of individual colours and things. So I'm just going to leave a few pieces of layer primer to sort of try and tie all this together. Um, because I've got so many sort of metallic pieces and various other bits and pieces in here, um, I think it's going to be quite tricky to paint this. Um, I can't just give it a layer of undercoat so I kind of want to retain all of those metal um, colours. But um, painting a few pieces should at least bring a bit more uh, cohesion to the overall look of the piece. Right, so there we go. Now we're almost at the painting stage and the wiring stage. So um, I'm going to leave it here for this piece of the video. And the next piece of the video, I'm going to be painting the piece up, um, adding a sort of a small diorama base to it, and also wire it up so I can get all those LEDs working. Now, um, I should say that because this is being entered for a competition, I don't think I can post any final pictures of the piece until the competition is finished. The deadline is October 31st, um, so it might be a few weeks until after that that I can actually post the final piece of this video series. So just a warning that there'll be a bit of a wait until the next one but thanks for watching if you've got up to this point and i'll see you next time thanks very much for watching i'll be posting more videos on this project and others so if you'd like to keep up with what's going on please do subscribe alternatively you can visit my website which is www.thedarkpower.com or you can find me on facebook just search for the dark power